Good morning students. Hi, this is Dr. Shiva Kumar. I am going to handle data structures today for you. So today's lecture is I am going to deal with data structures. Data structures. So what do you mean by data? So as a computer science students, we all would be knowing about data, isn't it? So data is any information which is feed into the computer. So the data is going to be taken as input for the computer and computer is going to give the data, some process data as an output, isn't it? In between the data which is going to be taken as input and process, whatever may be, the data are need to be stored inside the computer. So whenever we are going to store inside the computer, we deal with memory, isn't it? So in the memory, how the data is going to be stored in a structured manner. So that is what we are going to talk about. So the data which are going to be stored inside the computer, they need to be stored inside the computer in an organized way. So say for an example, even in our home, if all the items we just throw here and there and we are just keep all the items in a random manner, the retrieval of the item will be a difficult task, isn't it? Similarly, when we are going to put the data, store the data in the memory in a random way without any organized manner, then the retrieval of the data will be a difficult task and it is going to be a time consuming task. So whenever we talk about any algorithm, we have to be very clear that our algorithm is going to be very efficient algorithm, isn't it? So how can the efficiency of an algorithm is being measured? The efficiency of the algorithm written by the user is measured by means of two factors. One is time complexity and another one is space complexity, isn't it? Say for an example, I'm going to give a problem to two, th two or three students and I, I'm going to ask all the students to come out with a suitable algorithm for the solution of the given problem. So what they will do? They will have a logic and another student will have another logic and another student will have another logic, isn't it? So all the logics can be different but the solution is going to be the same so that the algorithms which are going to be framed by the three different students are going to be different but they are going to give the solution for the given problem isn't it so now how can we measure the efficiency of the given three algorithms by the given three students that is possible by means of measuring and comparing their algorithms in terms of time complexity and space complexity so the algorithm should be fast enough for execution so that the time complexity is going to be less. Similarly, space complexity, it is going to occupy less memory in the uh, memory, less space in the memory. So that is what called as space complexity. So the time complexity is going to give you how much less time the algorithm is going to consume and similarly space complexity talks about the less space it is going to occupy in the memory. So whenever we have less space in the memory and less uh, execution time we can say that that algorithm is, is efficient algorithm. So we here we deal with the time and space complexity. So both of them are going to be directly related with the data which is being stored in the memory which is going to be organized isn't it so for that purpose in order to have less time and space complexity the data which is being stored inside the computer has to be arranged in an organized manner I hope you all got it isn't it I repeat the data which is going to be stored inside the computer have to be organized way it should not be in a random way so that the retrieval of the data will be very easy. So the logical or mathematical model in which we are going to store the data in the memory in an organized way is called as data structure. So I can say that data structure is nothing but the logical way as well as or mathematical way. way of arranging the data in an organized manner. So it will give you organized data. 
Are you able to follow? I repeat once again, the data which is going to be stored in the memory in a logical or mathematical way of arranging in an organized manner. So that organized data is called as data structure. So not only that, data structure is represented as a collectively combination of data structure is equal to data structure is equal to organized data so which we have organized those organized data together with all the allowed operations all the allowed operations so whenever we have data definitely we are going to process the data that means there are some processes some operations which are being operated on data isn't it so we have organized data and the operations which are going to be operated on the data so those organized data and oper operations on data together collectively represent data structure i hope you all uh, got it isn't it so data structure is the organized data together with the number of operations allowed on those data collectively we represent as data structure the best example i can give you is as a programmer because you are all computer science students isn't it so whenever we talk about you are going to write a program say for an example i am going to ask you people to write a program to and in that program you are going to take an input of a particular person's age so what will you do immediately to get the input age we will declare a variable called age isn't it so generally what people will do because immediately whenever we talk about age age is an integer data positive data and so we what we will do immediately we will declare int age isn't it so we will declare as int age do you think that this is correct way of uh, declaring the data no because integer is going to have a big range between minus 32767 to plus 32767 so the data that variable which is going to be declared as integer is going to have a big such a range but age of a person is going to be maximum 100 isn't it the main 1 2 3 like that a man, a man can have maximum of age 100 so in that case do we need the entire range no so what we can do is instead of going for int we have modifiers for int i think you might have heard about the modifiers short long isn't it similarly signed and signed so what we will do we will modify the data type using the modifiers as short int that means it is going to have a short range of integer value again we talk about positive negative so the data may be minus 37 to 32000 to positive 32000 isn't it any age uh, is it, is it going to be a negative value no the age of a person is a positive value right so we don't need to declare consider the negative range so in that case we are going to declare it as only positive so negative means signed positive means unsigned so we are going to have a unsigned short int age so instead of declaring this int what we are going to do is unsigned short int age so we have modified this declaration as unsigned short int age so this is the correct way of declaring the data variable age so let this will occupy less efficient space in the memory so this is a kind of organizing the data in a proper manner have you got with this example so since the time is less i can give you more examples on the next class also so data structure is going to be the organized way of arranging the data and keeping the data in a manner and we are going to do some operations on the data so allowed operations and the data organized data together collectively called as data structures and data structure are of two types one is linear data types linear data structure another one is non linear data structure 
linear data structure data structure type 1 type 2 types of data structure so the types of data structure one is linear data structure another one is non-linear data structure linear data structure means the data which are going to form a sequence that means they form a sequence data linear data structure form sequence and non-linear data structure do not form sequence Are you able to follow? The data which are going to be formed in a sequential order. 1, 2, 3 like that. It is going to follow some sequence. So which form a sequence? Such type of data structure are referred as linear data structure. The linear data structure examples are arrays, linked lists, stack, then queues. These are all the examples for linear data structure and for non-linear data structure they will not form any sequence. They will be simply without a sequence it will be ordered. So such examples for non-linear data structure is one is trees and another one is graphs. Trees and graphs are the examples for non-linear data structure. So I hope you all understand, isn't it? So data, what is data? Then data structure, then memory. Then we talked about the example for data structure organized manner. Then we discussed about the types. One is linear data structure. Another one is non-linear data structure, isn't it? So for linear data structures, we have arrays, linklets, then stacks and queues. And for non-linear data structures, the types are trees and graphs. I hope all the students you got it, isn't it? Are you clear with it? If you have any doubts, please stop me then and there and I am ready to repeat as many times until you all are familiar with the concept. Because data structure is going to be a very important concept in because in all the programming languages we are going to write a program and whenever we are going to talk about the program, data is important, isn't it? So data structure is a very important core subject and concept in computer science and applications isn't it so now we talk about memory allocation so whenever we talk about memory allocation there are two types of memory allocation one is static memory allocation and another one is dynamic memory allocation memory allocation whenever we talk about memory allocation there are one two types one is static memory allocation and another one is dynamic memory allocation static memory allocation means the memory is going to be allocated during compile time this is compile time and dynamic memory allocation this is going to be allocated during run time that means execution time so static memory allocation will be allocated by whom whenever we talk about compile time that means the program is going to be executed compiled then executed and during the compile time what are all the data you are going to be declared and they will be allocated with proper memory isn't it so that memory allocation which is done during the compile time is called a static memory allocation and that will be allocated by the operating system OS then what about dynamic memory allocation? It will be allocated during runtime in a program through the programmer, through the user. So that means in a program, user will allocate. Similarly, he can free of the memory. So whatever the data, sometimes he can allocate himself during the execution of the program and he can free of the memory during the execution of the program. So it can be done through the program by the programmer. Whereas compile time, that is static memory allocation, can be done, will be allocated by operating system. So this is OS, operating system. And this will be done through the program, by the programmer. Are you able to follow? So in a program, I think in C and lang C language and all, we, we have used malloc. Similarly, free. 
So malloc is a function which will be used to allocate the memory. Similarly, free is a function which will be used to free of the allocated memory which has already been allocated. So these will be done and allocated appropriately by the user through a program. So such type of memory allocations are called as dynamic memory allocations and the memory which is allocated during the compile time by the OS operating system is called as static memory allocations because whenever we are going to talk about data structure definitely we should know about the memory allocation static and dynamic because all the linear and non-linear data structures we are going to deal with uh, implementation in terms of arrays and linked list. So whenever we are going to have array type of implementation, linked list type of impl implementation for linear and non-linear data structures, we have to know about static and dynamic memory allocation. That's why I gave introduction about memory allocations, static and dynamic. Have you got it? I hope all you have got it. Okay. So no problem. So don't be panic. So whenever you have any doubts, you just tell me, I'm ready to explain again and again. And you have full liberty to ask your doubts during the lecture hours. Okay. Thank you. Now, let us pass on to operations on the linear data structure. So now we talked about organized data plus operations on the data, isn't it? So what are all the operations uh, uh, which are allowed on the linear data structures? One is traversal and another one is sorry so the operations on the linear data structures what are all the operations one is traversal another one is searching i mean search then insertion then deletion Then merging. Okay. Traversal, search, insertion, then deletion. And another thing is instead of before merging, another thing is also there that is sorting. Okay. So sorting and merging. So what do you mean by traversal? Traversal means processing each element in the list. What are all the items going to be present in the list? We are going to process each element, isn't it? So processing each element is nothing but the traversal. We are going to traverse through the list by acquiring all the elements. Then search. For any in a list, for a particular item with a given key value, we are going to search that element whether it is present or not. So whenever we talk about search, we are all familiar with, uh, you might have heard about the word binary search. So what do you mean by binary search? Binary search is one of the searching technique which will help you to do this operation search. Binary means by means two, isn't it? So binary search, best example I can give you is the searching for a particular name in a telephone directory. Say for an example, my name is Siva Kumar. Siva Kumar. I'm going to search this name. What will I do? I will take the telephone directory. What will immediately I'll do? I will go to the middle of the page and I will divide it into two parts. Like that, I will take the middle page. Similarly like this. In the middle page, I'll see, say for an example, something like the names with letter K are there. What will I do? I have to search for the name which starts with S, isn't it? So what I will do? K, K is there. So definitely S will come in the right portion of the book. So I need not go for the left portion of the book for searching. So I will leave the left portion and again the right portion, again I will divide into two. I'll take the middle page. Say for an example, I'll I have come across like R. So R means again, R, yes comes after R. So what I will do, again the left portion I will leave it and right portion I will take it. Similarly, each time you will divide by 2, 2, 2 like that until and you go for the particular uh, you, the process, the item and if the item is uh, sir, the reach, then you can stop the search. So this is binary search. So this is this example I can give you to explain what is search operation. So traversal, then search, then insertion. Whenever we talk about any list, we are going to insert an item in the list. So that is what called as insertion of elements in the list. 
so insertion similarly deletion means removing the particular item and merging if you have two lists you are going to merge the two lists into a single list that is what called as merging then sorting means the elements the data which are going to be present in the list are going to be arranged in a sorted manner that means either in an increasing order or in a decreasing order that means either alphabetically or non alphabetically are you able to follow so this is what called as sorting so traversal search insertion deletion then merging sorting all these operations are possible on the data structures so we have discussed about data then data structure then memory allocation dynamic static then we discussed about the types of the data structure linear data structure non linear data structure then operations on data structures these are all the different operations are you able to follow students have you been cleared with the concepts don't worry i can explain again so that i can make you understand all the subject all the concepts clearly and in the next classes coming classes i will give you more examples real time examples and examples with terms of program i can make you understand very clear okay so now let us talk about stack linear data structure stack and another linear structure main thing is important is queue so stack is a linear data structure in which the items are added and removed at only one end called top of the stack top of the stack so the all the items will be put up in the stack one after another in this way so if you are going to add an item you have to add from the top if you are going to remove any item from that stack you are going to remove from the top so both addition and removing that mean the deletion both the operations on the stack are going to be done at only one end that end is called as top of the stack so from the top we are going to do the addition from the top we are going to do the deletion so both the operations on the stack can be done at only one end called top of the stack i can give you some examples uh, like uh, stack uh, we can like uh, uh, stack of books we can call if you have the example of stack of books or you keep uh, towels huh? so all towels what we will do one after another we will keep and we will take in the same way that means the one which came last into the stack will be taken out first are you able to follow the item which is being placed last will come out first because all the operations are being done on the top isn't it so such this in therefore uh, stack will follow the order of lifo last in first out what do you mean by l last in first out that means the item which comes last will go out first so this is the order this is the concept behind the stack linear data structure similarly we have another data structure queue in which the operations both the insertion as well as the deletion will be done at the different ends that means insertion will done at the front end and removal deletion will be done at the rear end we call that end as front end and another one is rear in front we insert and in rear we delete so the next example i can give you is people waiting in the queue what we will do people are waiting in the queue who goes first will get the service first and he will come out first so what will happen in the front insertion will be done like that and in the rear deletion will be done are able to follow are able to follow so insertions and deletion sorry i made a mistake sorry uh, in uh, front deletion will be done i'm i'm sorry it's rear insertion will be done see you are having a queue like this the person is starting in the front so like that it will be done and one this is the service counter what will happen 
insertion people will come and join the queue in the rear insertion and they will get the service and who is in the front will go out that means it will be deleted so deletion will be done in the front end and insertion will be done in the rear end so these are all the two main operations which are being done on the linear data structure queue similarly on stack there are two basic operations one is push another one is pop push operation is nothing but inserting the element into the stack and pop operation is nothing but removing the element from the top of the stack both these push and pop operations will be done on the top of the stack at only one end whereas in queue it will be done at two different ends front and rear are you able to follow so stack and queue are the two different linear data structures based on which it will be arranged data will be arranged so as we are running short of time let me just give a brief uh, uh, about non linear data structure also non linear data structures we said uh, uh, we talked about the what are all the non linear data structures i just told about non linear data structures one is tree another one is graph isn't it for hierarchical relationships okay tree so whenever we are going to represent the data in an hierarchical way like a family tree for son then grands father son grand sir, grandfather son then grandson like that we will go isn't it so whenever we are going to represent the data in a hierarchical manner we will go for non linear data structure tree and whenever we are going to represent as a directed or indirected type of graph we will go for graph graph will be represented using an ordered pair v comma e ordered pair what do you mean by ordered pair v comma e v is num nothing but the number of vertices e or nothing but the number of edges that means each node is a vertex and if you have two vertex v1 v2 we will connect those nodes those vertices using an edge so this is edge e similarly what are all the if you have a graph the all the collection of vertices will be termed as v and all the number of edges will be termed as e and collectively v comma e is an ordered pair which is nothing but the represented graph so this we will discuss in the next class and uh, i hope you are familiar with all this uh, basic data structure concepts so one by one again i will discuss with more examples in the next class and by for now and uh, i really thank all of you for your patience listening thank you once again have a great day again hi